Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron, and my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary, whom you've probably seen if you've seen any of my presentations at the Saul Marsh. Um, and their purpose, their goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's on Nantucket, that means right here. They don't want to leave. They definitely don't want to go to Martha's Vineyard. They don't want to go to the mainland. They want to stay. So the, p the question is, who are the people you, that, that you, if you identify with them, that you need to know? And what are the programs you need to know about in order to do exactly that? Just stay here, live happily ever after on Nantucket. Um, um, it seems like everybody actually knows my co-host much more than me, Allison Forsgren, who has been, who actually has been here for a long, long time, right? Is in on beautiful Nantucket kind of, and, and she's in, in charge of finding these great guests whom she consistently does. And today we have one who, it, who is extremely relevant to the present. Whom do we have Allison as a guest? Well, today's um, guest is Michelle Epps, and she is the Chief Nursing Officer at the Nantucket Cottage Hospital. Um, I think relatively new to the island and stepping in to, to do a huge job um, that we really need. So, um, Michelle, want to tell us a little bit about what it is that you do at the hospital? Sure, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you and talk about uh, the hospital, but more importantly, talk about what's happening in healthcare around the COVID vaccine. So I am the Chief Nursing Officer and the Vice President of Patient Care Services. Um, boiling that down, what does that mean? Well, I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for over 30 years. I'm in a, a variety of different um, roles in my fabulous career. I love, love, love being a nurse. Um, and I've had the opportunity to lead hospitals for about 20 of those 30 years, both very, very small hospitals such as Nantucket serving um, a, a rural population or now an island population to the largest of academic hospitals, um, partnering in research activities, et cetera. Um, so what I do here is uh, help guide the healthcare and patient care activities for all of our island members to ensure that uh, we are providing all the services that are needed uh, in the most um, appropriate and quality oriented way. I was going to ask you what your favorite part of your job is, but apparently you spelled it out to us already. Um, do you, it, it, it sounds like you love your work. I love, I love being a nurse and taking care of other people. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. And it has to be kind of fun being in this this literally just spanking new facility in terms of kind of having a lot of stuff at your fingertips. I'm sure you've gone through if you've gone through a lot of different hospital settings, especially in rural contexts, you don't necessarily see what they got there, right? That would be very true. We're very lucky uh, that the island uh, values uh, the healthcare uh, capabilities for uh, our community members, and I will use every resource that they want to give us to make sure that we're providing those services. So, Allison, you, you, want, you want to be talking a little bit about the vaccine? Oh, by, by the way, I did have one just trivia question. So, as I often do, I ask folks, so how did you end up here exactly? You know, this, many, many people showed up because they were on college break and like never left, you know, and they never grew up. And then there were a few, a handful like Allison who were kind of from here. How did, how did you end up here? Well, I can certainly attest that I wasn't on college break. That's a bit past my, <laughs> uh, past my prime, most certainly. Um, I, my husband and I are uh, from the DC area and uh, um, have looked, been wanting to look for a place to land in the last part of our careers and then um, certainly a, a community where we can live. Uh, I don't know if I want to be buried in the backyard, but certainly live um, uh, peacefully and happily where we know our neighbors, which is not necessarily what you find in Washington, D.C. Um, I really had a fabulous, wonderful job consulting with hospitals all over the country um, to help them implement new programs that served their communities. And a friend of mine sent me this opportunity on Nantucket. Um, and I wasn't quite sure that I actually wanted to not be able to 
um, do the wonderful consulting work that I was doing. And I, uh, I mentioned it in passing over dinner to my husband and uh, he, you know, he stood up from the table and uh, basically said in, a, in his most loving way, darling, if you do not apply for this job, we are going to have to have a very serious conversation. <laughs> it is absolutely the place that we want to be as a couple um, and, as a, and as part of this community. So uh, I was hired to do this wonderful, wonderful job. I will share with you that um, someone said to me really, really early on in this process, uh, if you want it, to to live on Nantucket, you have to want to live on Nantucket. And uh, we were certainly tested. Uh, we missed the boat and uh, had all kinds of harrowing experiences trying to get on this island, but we persevered and we're here and uh, couldn't be happier, could not be happier to be part of this community. Well, well thank you. Thank you for that. And that's a great, that's a really good story too. That's a, that's, that's one of my favorites so far. From the yeah. from the wash ashores as as Arthur calls them. <laughs> that's that's us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and so anyway, a um, lot of lot of new news and changing news around how the cor coronavirus is going to be, um, no, how it's going to how the vaccine is going to be rolled out and who gets what when and where. And I'm hoping that you can um, shed some light. I know it's an ever changing. It seems to me, anyway, an ever-changing um, solution. But please, how do people make sure that they're on the list? So I'm so glad to be able to talk about that. And uh, most importantly, I will tell you, this is an ever-changing and evolving experience in the vaccine rollout, um, not just nationally and at a state level, but certainly at a, as, as the town of Nantucket. Um, works very, very diligently to get, uh, as uh, as they say, needles in the arms, right? So it's great to have a vaccine, uh, but more importantly, we need to have the vaccinations, right? So the needles in the arms. Um, let me just uh, preface this by saying, um, we are in phase two, uh, most people know, but I wanna help explain what that means. Um, if you are on um, any of the websites, you'll see the different phases that Governor Baker uh, has implemented for how we're gonna roll out this vaccine. And as uh, Nantucket Cottage Hospital, we were uh, graciously given the opportunity first to vaccinate our own employees, which we did in, in stellar and record time, but this, and that was through our Mass General um, system partner. Uh, but the state then reached out to me and asked, uh, as I was leading that particular vaccine program, if I would be willing to work with the town on vaccinating everyone that was eligible in phase one. We had the capability and certainly the passion and desire to do that. So partnering with the town, we were able to um, stand up or expand our employee vaccine program to allow everyone that was eligible in phase one to get vaccinated at our facility. I will say that we did that in record time. It was seamless. Um, there was no issue with getting an allocation of the vaccine. And because of that, the state then um, asked if we would continue that effort with the town as we move into phase two. So the answer to how do you get on a list um, is twofold because we are um, lucky enough to have Mass General uh, partnering to supply us vaccine for our patients. But then I also have my other partner, the state of Massachusetts, that's sending us separate allocations to vaccinate more people than we even could just through Mass General. And I really want to highlight that because that is extraordinary. So we are not encumbered with just a small amount of vaccine that we can get from one entity. Um, so I'm very, very thankful to my state partners. All that being said, um, we knew that we had to vaccinate a lot more people than we did in phase one. So phase two, as you know, starts with our um, with our community members that are wonderfully 75 years of age or older. Um, and I call them our most reliable patients anyway. They'll show up on time. They, they know what they want and um, you don't have to conjole. It's a very, uh, it's a great partnership with our uh, 75 plus individuals. 
but we knew that we needed to vaccinate a lot more people. So we're moving that process out of the hospital and into the VFW, who has been so very gracious in allowing us to continue to utilize that space. As you may know, we've utilized that space already for our Stop the Spread uh, COVID testing. Now we're extending that into um, of our vaccination program beginning next week. Um, so there's a couple of ways that our 75-year uh, um, and older individuals can be on the list. Most, almost all of our, uh, all of those eligible patients are already patients of ours at the Nantucket Cottage Hospital. Um, there is a, uh, a um, sign up through our patient gateway, which is the communication arm of Mass General where they would sign up and then Mass General would call them and put them on a schedule. If they can't sign up um, they're, they and they're already our patient, um, they will also still receive a call if they're eligible. Lastly, um, there's a lot of people that signed up through the town. That uh, option is still open. And I want to express how important that is because which is why I prefaced it by saying, we get vaccine from Mass General, but then we get vaccine from the state. And in order to ask for the vaccine from the state, I need to know how many people I have to vaccinate. So signing up through our town website allows me to let the state know that I have this many people that we'd like to vaccinate as rapidly as we possibly can. So signing up on the town website is also an imperative. And then we will take that information and we will call you, Nantucket Cottage Hospital will call you if you're 75 years of age or older. And we'll put you on, um, on a scheduled time and day that's appropriate for you uh, and give you all of the instructions that you need in order to come in and get your vaccine. So let me just, let me just reiterate. So it is a scheduled process. So people aren't lining up at the door. You don't have to fight for a space. Um, and there are a couple of ways. If you're already a patient, you will get a call from Mass General. If you can sign up for the patient gateway, and I'll give that information to your editor, D, so she can um, send that out, uh, then they will send you an email or a text and you can schedule yourself, or we will take the information from the town website that people graciously signed up for, and we will call and schedule you. Wow. Lots of ways. Yeah. Lots and so, so if you've already, for instance, signed up on the town website, do you, and you are, um, have a patient gateway account, do you need mm -hmm. to do both of them? Um, it's no, uh, it is preferable if you're on the patient gateway, it makes it easier. Uh, but I don't want anyone to walk away from this conversation and think that if they aren't, they're not going to be able to be scheduled. It is the easiest way because we can communicate with you uh, by phone call, by text, or by email. Uh, and, uh, and you can also have the ability to pick your own schedule without ha anyone having to call you. If you're on the patient gateway, um, you can then um, man it and, and someone can manage that navigation for you or you can do it yourself. You can pick your own day and time to show up based on um, the open schedule slots. So, so if you have already done it through the town and would prefer to work through Patient Gateway if you're already set up that way, it sounds like it's more concise, um, but are you, will, the, will you be doubled on the list? for instance? I mean, that's an excellent question. Um, no, we compare the lists every day uh, to make sure uh, that we don't do that. So um, if you get a scheduled slot, you potentially could be called a second time for a scheduled slot. That's not terrible. Some people in the country aren't getting called at all. So um, I wouldn't be angry if I got called twice for a scheduled slot. You would just say I'm already on the schedule if that were to ever occur. But we try to, um, we look at those, uh, both of those lists every day and we try to uh, manage it um, pretty pretty well. We manage it pretty well. Allison, if I, if I may, I'm just, so I'm, I'm curious about the, the, obviously, we're talking about folks who are 75 or older, some of whom are not in terrific health and may have a lot of problems 
you know, and may not be, you know, really uh, able to 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 manipulate uh, um, connecting through through a list through the internet, right? Yep. So I guess the que the two questions are: one, if you're that person, but somebody is helping you a lot, you know, if that if it, whether it is your daughter or your husband or whatever, can that other person sign up on your behalf by by going into one of these sites? And and if so, kind of what's the what's the process for that? You know, do you need to kind of verify that you've got authorization or something? Is this a healthcare proxy question? Is any of that? And then and then for and then for for those folks that you're just that you haven't heard from by by some date, is there is there any kind of outreach program to those folks to say you know so how come you're not on the list? You know how come we haven't heard from you? Uh, so yeah, so excellent questions. Let me start with the first one. Um, it's absolutely appropriate to allow someone to help you um, if you're having difficulty navigating a site. Sometimes it's important to have a proxy, but that would be more so if you weren't really able to make decisions for yourself. Um, but if you're just have, needing someone to manage the electronic piece of this, uh, then that's absolutely appropriate. You are uh, quite capable of giving the information that you want to put in there and someone is just helping you put that in. That's absolutely appropriate. Uh, the second piece is we do have people that are either homebound or would not be able to come to the vaccine clinic and we're very aware of that. Um, so in our partnership with the town and opening up, opening up the VFW, they are also managing a separate piece where our town partners will uh, go to homes uh, to, uh, to vaccinate individuals as, as they are identified through our elder services and VNA and other, other sources. So we will get to absolutely everybody. But relative to the scheduling piece, which is what um, Nantucket Cottage Hospital is managing, um, those were the specifics that I was giving earlier. Right. That's great. That's great. Because once again, I would assume that that, you know, that that the group that I'm talking about is a much smaller group. Um, so if, and, and so that you, so that, but, but it sounds like you've got a, a system that is really structured so that the vast majority of people are going to be able to use that system, which really is going to make the outreach to that other group a lot easier because the group's going to be much smaller. Absolutely. We certainly don't want to pigeonhole um, this opportunity in just one very narrow pathway to get the vaccine. So we're trying, although it, it oftentimes even confuses me how, how we're managing all of this, um, giving people multiple options to get in the door and in a scheduled slot to get a vaccine is, is ultimately what we're attempting to do. Certainly, we will be posting information almost daily, um, both at the town website and the hospital website on if there are additional numbers that they can call, which we do not have yet, um, or uh, someone specific that they can talk to, which we do not have yet. But as this unfolds, we'll um, make sure that we even have more pathways to get people enrolled. And I also do wanna say that we worked very hard yesterday with the town to make sure everything was um, handicap accessible um, and was um, following all of the guidelines that the, uh, the, the state and frankly the CDC puts out on keeping people safe through this process, socially distancing and um, making sure that people feel uh, comfortable when they're in this process. So, so I have a question. Um, we all watch the news um, and are seeing what's happening in other places in the state and country. Um, will there just be, I mean, how many sites will there be? Will there just be the VFW or can you get the vaccine at your doctor's office? Um, or at a drugstore. I mean, how, how, I mean, how many places will there be to be vaccinated? Um, so I certainly know that there will be more and more and more as this process unfolds. Uh, most importantly, we want it to start immediately. Um, and as that is, it is just the VFW and then the town specific outreach that they'll be doing. Um, as this process uh, becomes more robust and there's more vaccines available across the country, then there will be opportunities uh, at the private physician offices, et cetera. But that's not today. And what I wanna make sure of today is that you don't have to wait another month or two months or into the summer to get a vaccine. Uh, so I wanna open up as many possible slots as we can based on 
both Mass General sending me vaccines and then the state sending me vaccines. Um, and we will open up uh, hundreds of slots uh, every week, if not more. I uh, can't make promises that would be empty, but uh, at least hundreds of slots a week. Um, we have the capability of doing much more based on the vaccines that will be given to us through both pathways. And so um, as you go further down the line, so the 75 and up are gonna be prioritized for this next, for the beginning of phase two. What if you were in phase one and you didn't sign up in time? How to, I mean, can you sign up in phase two and be prioritized or? Yes, that's a fabulous question. I, th I think we did a great job getting as many, uh, anyone in phase one that wanted the vaccine got the vaccine. Um, but there are some people that waited uh, through, you know, cautiousness or they were not feeling well or whatever that might have been. So absolutely, if you were in a previous um, eligible phase, then you can just tag right into where we're at. And so you'd sign up for a phase, two, you know, in, in the phase two process. That's correct. Um, and so what happens after the 75 and up, you know, when do the, you know, when do the teachers, for instance, be, get vaccinated? Um, so we are, um, we are expected and mandated to follow the state's guidance on when we are allowed to open up slots for other individuals. Uh, I do anticipate uh, in phase one, for instance, they opened up the, I, I'm, pardon my terminology, but within a phase, there are tiered priorities. So the 75 and older are tier one or priority one for phase two. It was the same thing in phase one and they opened up those priority statuses faster than what they anticipated because we were so very efficient in giving the vaccine once they let us give the vaccine. So dates aren't hard and fast. What I do know um, that is expected to happen is that during the phase one, um, I'm sorry, during the phase two 75 and older, they will not wait until all of those are completed before they open the second tier, which currently, according to state guidance, is 65 and older, or anyone that has two serious complications, medical complications. Um, and then the third tier would be our teachers and our essential workers and others. So this is a overlapping process. It's not you have to complete one before you start the other. So those dates aren't really hard and fast yet. It's really based on vaccine availability. Um, Michelle, one question about the actual vaccine process. Um, will people expect to have to take two doses? Yes, and that's, have, I'm sorry. That's oh, absolutely okay. what's needed um, based on the uh, uh, efficacy of the vaccine being able to work. You have to get two, two vaccinations. Depending on the manufacturer, Moderna, which is one manufacturer, requires a second vaccination in 28 days, and Pfizer requires a vaccination in 21 days. Um, so when you come to get your first dose, we will schedule your second dose at that time. So you're uh, quite aware of when you need to come back. If anything happens and you need to reschedule, there's no problem with that. It's not that it won't be effective um, if you needed to wait a few days for whatever reason. You'll also get a vaccine card that you will be able to keep with you that will show which vaccine that you received and when your second dose is due. And you'll bring that back with you and then you'll be able to keep that card forever if you ever have to um, show proof of vaccination. One thing that's very important to remember, however, that even after the second dose, uh, the CDC says that it will take another two weeks for you to really have built up all of the immunity that they want you to build up to fight against this COVID um, virus. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through the process of vaccination and make sure that you stay diligent on all of the precautions that you need to, keep, to take to keep yourself healthy and all of your loved ones healthy. That is wear a mask, wash your hands, don't gather in large numbers and then stay socially distanced when you do gather. That will be very important to continue throughout this whole process. Great, that's, that's, that's very good to know. Thank you, Michelle. So Michelle, as, as I had mentioned kind of at the beginning of the show, my, my job a lot of the, in a lot of these cases is to just do comic relief and watch the time. So I've been, I've been sensitive to the time 
And this has been like really fascinating. And but as a result, I think we're getting close to the end of our show. I, but one of the things I just wanted to mention, I do these shows in a number of communities. I, I can't think of any place that is as organized and rolling this out as efficiently as here. It's really something. It's really something. It's just folks are really lucky. I think once again, I think because there's, there's always been that infrastructure here and this sense of real community cooperation. But it's really it's really something to watch. And Allison, this has been really terrific. This is it, is it really over yet? I've got one more question. And absolutely, absolutely. I'm just wondering when when people are actually signing up and when they're going to the site for their vaccine, what do they need to have with them? What do they need to bring? So great question. I would ask that everyone bring identification and that's purely, it's not to, um, uh, manage anything. It's to make sure that uh, when you show up, Allison, I'm no, I know I'm giving Allison Allison's vaccine. Uh, this is part of your medical record, and we certainly wouldn't want to make any kinds of mistakes about identification. So just any kind of an identification that says you are you, uh, and that's all that we ask for. Well, that's great. So, Allison, thank you very much. Michelle, thank you very much for this, and and thanks very much to the folks uh, at Nantucket Cable for allowing us to do these shows. And I know M Michelle, as Allison probably mentioned to you, we do these shows every other week. So as this thing rolls out more, uh, Allison may be, may be trying to pull on your heartstrings again and trying to take you away from your day job to have you come back on. Because I think, especially while you're rolling out to the, to, the old, to the older folks in the community who really, I think a lot of folks, uh, those folks watch this show. So thank you very, very much. And Allison, thanks, thanks a million for doing this. It was, it was just great. Folks, thank you very much for watching. And I know Dee uh, here at, at NCTV is going to be putting up all of Michelle's, the contact information that you need. Uh, if you've got any questions, you know, you should be reaching out to them, their job. And you can see Michelle is just, Michelle wants to take care of you. She just wants to take care of everybody. So you just got to connect with her so that she can help you. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks, Allison, for doing this again. And we'll, folks, we'll see you all on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you very much.